you can control the visibility of individual reference items or groups of items. You can also turn off the display of all reference geometry at once. To turn off all reference geometry, from the main menu, select References, and then uncheck All. When I uncheck the All option, you can see that all the reference planes, points, axes, surfaces, and coordinate systems become hidden. In addition, they're denoted with dimmed text in the Design Explorer. You can unhide all reference geometry items in the same way by checking on the All option. Or you can use the keyboard shortcut of Control, Shift, and P, as I've just done. To control the display of specific groups of reference geometry items, go back to the View menu and then choose References. In this case, I will hide the axes group. Notice that when I turn off axes, they are no longer displayed in the work area, and they are shown in dimmed text in the Design Explorer. Now I will turn the axes display back on in the same way. From the View menu, select References, and then check on the option Axes. You can also control visibility from the Design Explorer. In this case, I will select all the planes by moving my mouse cursor over the Planes category and then left click to select it. Then right click in the work area and select Hide. This collectively hides all of the reference planes. I will turn the planes display back on in the same way. Left click to select the planes category and then right click and uncheck the hide option. In addition, you can hide individual items. To do this, move the mouse cursor over the item in the Design Explorer, right click, and select Hide. The item is shown in dimmed text and is not visible in the work area. To hide items in a series, use the Windows convention of left clicking to select the first item, and then press the Shift key down and select the last item in the series. Then right click on the work area and select Hide. The two items selected and everything in between will now be hidden. To select multiple items that are not in a series, hold the control key down and select each item that you wish to hide. Then right click in the work area and select hide. The selected items should now be hidden. You can turn the display of these items back in the same way. I will select each of the hidden axes and the planes while holding the control key and then right click in the work area and uncheck hide. For better visibility of reference planes in the work area, you can choose to view the reference plane shaded. To do this, from the Tools menu, select Options. On the General tab, select Shade Reference Planes. Now click OK and the reference planes will be shown slightly shaded in the work area. Another option to assist you while modeling is to show reference plane normals. To do this, from the Tools menu, select Options. On the General tab, select Show Reference Plane Normals and click OK. Now when I move the cursor over a reference plane, an arrow will be displayed normal to the plane, indicating the positive direction. At any time, you can rename a reference geometry item. To do this, move the cursor over the item in the Design Explorer, right click, and then select Rename. Type in a new name for the item and then press Enter on your keyboard. Renaming reference geometry is not required, but it can help you keep track of all the reference geometry items that you create. It can be particularly helpful to rename reference geometry that you insert because you can name it to reflect any feature that you created with it. If you need to delete an item, you can do this by moving the cursor over the item in the Design Explorer, click it to select it, and then press Delete on your keyboard. Or you can select it, and then right click and choose Delete. If you attempt to delete an item that was used to create an existing sketch or figure, the Delete option will no longer be available. In addition, you cannot delete the default reference geometry. Items can be deleted from the Design Explorer or from the work area.
You can add additional reference geometry items to help you construct the geometry for your design. First I will cover how to insert additional reference planes. By default, each part and assembly workspace has three reference planes displayed. The XY, YZ, and ZX. To add additional reference planes to your model, you can right click in the work area and select Insert Plane. Or you can select the Insert Plane tool from the inspection toolbar, or you can go to the Insert menu and select Plane. The Insert Plane dialog now appears. There are a variety of methods you can use to insert a plane. And the first method that I'll cover is inserting a plane offset and parallel to an existing plane or planar face. The first thing that I need to do is to click in the Select Geometry field, and then I select the plane or face that I want to offset from. The dialog updates, and I can now enter an offset distance. This will create a plane offset from the XY plane in a distance of 5 inches. Check the reverse checkbox to reverse the direction of the new plane. Now click OK to accept the new plane. You can see that it is added to the Design Explorer and is visible in the work area. New reference items are given a numeric name based on what type of reference item it is and the order of its creation. These items are listed under the Reference category as well as in the Feature list. You can edit any reference geometry that you create. I will edit this plane by right clicking on it in the Design Explorer and then choosing Edit. Now I can change the offset distance, press the Tab key to update the preview, and then click OK to apply the change. As you add geometry to your model, you can use existing planar faces to insert an offset plane. Here I have a model created, and I will right click in the work area to select Insert Plane, and then click in the Select Geometry field to activate it. Now I will select one of the faces of my model by left clicking on it and the dialog will update, allowing me to enter an offset distance. When I enter in a distance and press the tab key, the preview is displayed in the work area. When I'm satisfied, I click OK and the plane is created. The next method that I'll discuss is inserting a plane tangent to a cylindrical face. I've created a simple cylinder, and the YZ plane passes through the center of it. I will right-click in the work area, and select Insert Plane. Click in the Select Geometry field to activate it. Then I must first select the plane that the new plane will be parallel to, so I will select the YZ plane. I can then select the cylindrical face that I want the plane to be tangent to. Now both of these items are listed in the Select Geometry field, and I have a couple of options to choose from. I can create the plane as it is in the preview, or check the reverse option to move it to the alternative tangent location. If I want the plane to go through the center of a cylindrical face, I can check the symmetry axis option. When the plane is in the correct location, I can click OK to create it. Inserting a plane tangent to a cylindrical surface will allow you to add features to the surface of the cylinder itself. Next, I will illustrate how to insert a plane at an angle. I choose the Insert Plane option, and then click in the Select Geometry field. Now I need to choose an existing plane or face, so I will select the YZ plane and then I need an existing axis or edge to rotate about, so I will select the Z-axis. I am selecting the axis from the Design Explorer, which means I will need to hold the control key down to make the second selection. The dialog now updates, and I can now specify an angle of rotation. You can check the reverse checkbox to rotate the direction of the angle in the plane, and then finally click OK to create your plane. Now I will show you how you can insert a plane through an existing point parallel to an existing plane or planar face. I already have a point in my work area as you can see. We will cover inserting reference points in the next segment. I select the Insert Plane tool 
and then click in the Select Geometry field. And then I choose the plane or face that I want the new reference plane to be parallel to. And then I left click the point at which I want to pass through. Click OK to create your plane. The new reference plane is now associated with that point. So if I move or change the location of the point, the reference plane will change locations as well. I will demonstrate this by editing the point. Right click the point in the Design Explorer or the Work Area and choose Edit and changing the position of the point. When I regenerate the model by pressing F5 on the keyboard, you can see the plane updates as well. You can also create a plane that passes through an existing edge or axis and a point. I'll insert a plane, and this time I will select the z-axis as my first reference, and then select the point that I have in my work area. Both of these items are added to the dialog. Now I have two options to choose from. I can create the new plane so that it passes through the edge or axis, or I can create it normal to the edge or axis. Click OK to accept the plane. The next method is using three reference points to insert a plane. You can see that I already have three points inserted into my work area. I select the Insert Plane tool, click in the Select Geometry field, and then left click to select each point that I want to use to create the reference plane. After I've added the third point, the preview of the plane is displayed in the work area. This plane is now associated with these three points, and if I change the location of any of the points, the plane will update as well. The final method of inserting a plane that I will cover is normal to a 3D sketch or 3D edge of a solid model. 3D sketches will be discussed in later segments of the video series. I will choose Insert Plane, and then I can select either an edge of the model or an open 3D sketch figure. A preview of the new plane will be displayed. You can check the Other End checkbox to move the plane to the other end of the sketch or edge. And now click OK to create your plane. This concludes this segment of the video.